Thomas Patrick Ward, tune in the Sport and Icons. So John Fury, father to the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury, WBC lineal and Ring Magazine, heavyweight champion of the world. It said that Deontay Wilder cannot recover and is not the same fighter as what he once was because of what happened in the rematch with Tyson, where Tyson bounced Deontay Wilder up and down on the canvas like he was a basketball to the point where his team had to throw in the towel. Now, first of all, I've said pretty much the same thing as what John Fury has, many of you have as well, where this World Heavyweight title fight is probably, if not the most one-sided beatdowns that a champion has ever taken by the challenger in a World Heavyweight title fight. Now, I know some people say, yeah, but Anthony Joshua, he got blah, blah, blah. No, Anthony Joshua, okay, so Anthony Joshua, he got stopped in seven rounds, just like Wilder did as well, and he hit the deck in round number three, as Wilder did, and ended up getting stopped in round number seven, as Wilder did. But the difference is, is that Anthony Joshua, he won five of those seven rounds. He, he won round one, round two, round four, round five, and round six. Number, number three, after he dropped Daniel Ruiz Jr., that's when it all kind of like, like went wrong, okay? Joshua got hit to the canvas twice at the end of round number three, and then, of course, in round number seven as well. So it's not even comparable. Not even comparable, because at least Anthony Joshua was in that fight. Wilder never was. Now, when John Fury says that Wilder cannot recover, for me, it's not about the rematch. Wilder could never recover, and Wilder made the biggest mistake that he made, and I covered this in another video. In fact, if you haven't seen it, I'll put it at the end of this video. It will pop up, so just give it a click, which is that Tyson Fury had Deontay Wilder. The moment that Deontay Wilder made that mistake of pulling out of Anthony Joshua negotiations for Undisputed to go for Tyson Fury, because he saw Tyson Fury as easy work. Uh, finally, after 40-odd fights in, getting a name on his resume. Because Tyson Fury, after all the time that he's been out of the ring and everything that he was doing during those two and a half years, he should have been easy pickings for any good to top quality heavyweight. Now I said this, and of course I received like a lot of criticism for that one. John Fury has said it time and time again since, and again lately. Is John Fury getting the same kind of criticism? Probably not. but. Wilder, because of his limited skills, got exposed in that first fight. Tyson Fury got into the head of Deontay Wilder by convincing him to pull out of the Anthony Joshua fight and them two can have like two or three fights on the bounce and earn a whole lot more money. We don't need Anthony Joshua. What Tyson Fury's done there is now Tyson Fury is the one with the $100 million contract with top rank. Now Tyson Fury is in the position to be taken on Anthony Joshua fought undisputed for a couple of fights for life-changing generational money. He took that away from Deontay Wilder because Wilder saw him as vulnerable. And Tyson Fury was vulnerable first time round. But when he faced Tyson Fury again, that was a totally different Tyson Fury. And he put Deontay Wilder through the mill, bounced him around, spanked him, made him say Matei. So can Deontay Wilder recover? Now, outside of a puncher's chance, and again, you always have to give Wilder a puncher's chance, but again, this is against Tyson Fury. But a puncher's chance, he's got no more of a puncher's chance than most other heavyweights. And if Tyson Fury switched on in this third fight, and by the way, all the excuses and everything that Wilder said about the costume, allegedly, via Yahoo Sports, I think it was, and with all the extreme excuses from his fans, from the Wildettes, it's made Tyson Fury probably more interested in this third fight to do it again, with all the allegations of uh, glove tampering and water tampering and this, that and the other. Now Fury's going to have a bit more fuel to go, right, I'm definitely going to get you this time. Definitely going to get you. If you think last time was bad, you wait until this third fight. You've actually motivated him. And that's the one thing you didn't need to do. So you guys have made Deontay Wilder's already embarrassing loss into an extremely embarrassing loss with all the excuses. Because now, if Tyson Fury wants to, he can just put it on Deontay Wilder in the press conference as well to further 
mentally degrade him, which is what he's already been doing for like the first couple of fights, certainly in the first fight. But Wilder showed that he cracks very, very easy. He can't out-talk Tyson Fury. He can't bully Tyson Fury. And he got absolutely annihilated, especially when in the lead up to this fight, Wilder, he's saying how he's in the best condition that he's ever been. Finally, he gets to get in there with Tyson Fury when he's at his optimum best. As in John T. Wilder, he's feeling good and everything. So, but then suddenly, what? All these excuses started popping out? It's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And you guys have made it worse. You've made an already embarrassing situation into a far more embarrassing situation because you just can't accept that he got annihilated when it was always going to happen. And that's the truth of it. He was always going to get exposed. You can't go through 40 odd fights fighting the kind of level of opposition that he is, hyping him up like he's this big destructive killing machine. Because once he finally steps up, he's going to get exposed. He bore him into the own hype himself, that his power was sent down from some unknown force, which is why he's been obliterating opponents. But I'll tell you right now, you put those 40 opponents in with Derek Chisora, Derek Chisora would also have, have had a 40-0 record with his many knockouts. That's because of the level of opposition that Wilde's been fighting. And the level of opposition that Wilde's been fighting, and then jumping in with a Tyson Fury, the gap is too big. It's far too big. Now, if Wilder wasn't already mentally decimated by Tyson Fury beforehand, that whole loss, the way that it went down, is embarrassing. Wilder has gone absent without leave. He's off the radar, which is unlike Wilder. Wilder is very prolific on social media, but he's very, very quiet. And that's not a danger thing. He's quiet because he's embarrassed. He's quiet because he has nothing to say. He's quiet maybe because he's been encouraging some of these YouTubers and fans and that to start coming out with all these kind of excuses. Now he's going to have to pay the reaper for all the stupidity of their excuses. Because now you've given Tyson Fury fuel for the press conferences and fuel to put an even bigger beat down on Wilder. Now I do expect Wilder to be better for the third fight. I do expect him to have a couple of moments in the third fight. Why? Because he can't do any worse than what he did in the second fight. And that's the truth of it. He can't do any worse. So yes, I think John Fury is absolutely correct that Wilder cannot recover from this because he was already destroyed before he even got in the ring. Tyson Fury took away $100 million from, Tyson, from Deontay Wilder for undisputed. So not only is Wilder not in a position to fight for undisputed, but he's also not in a position to have two fights for over $100 million. Now Fury's got all that. That's going to really, really hurt Deontay Wilder. Wilder's going to be on GoFundMe at some point. I'll tell you, talking back, looking back on his career, yeah, I should have took this fight. Well, people were telling you that a lot of your management people, those around you, are not necessarily in it for you. Now, maybe he sees it. Has he made any changes? I don't know. But even so, I'm sure he's going to be working on um, a few things ready for the Tyson Fury third fight. But again, he's going to get absolutely mentally destroyed by Tyson Fury in the build-up if Fury decides to do so. So yeah, I, for me, I don't think that Deontay Wilder can recover from it, especially when he's going straight in with Tyson Fury. Don't get me wrong, as I said before, he's always going to have that punch of chance. If he can pull out that kind of punch from the locker room and land it flush on Fury, there's a very good chance Fury will not only go down, but, but maybe next time he won't get back up again. There's always that chance. However, that window is very, very small. Very, very small. And I'm sure that Tyson Fury is going to have something else up his sleeve. Because Fury, he's always got a plan A, B, C, D and E. Wilder has plan A. Survive until I can land that punch. That's his only plan. So he can incorporate some new boxing fundamentals and maybe start, start off the fight and actually use his jab, which he does actually, actually have a very good jab. And he was out jabbing Fury, especially in the first fight. But again, that was a Tyson Fury that just wasn't really ready. Mentally, he was ready, but physically, he wasn't. Wilder knew that. Shady Finkel knew that. JD's knew that. Al Heyman knew that. Everybody knew that but it still wasn't enough. So now Tyson Fury, 
He absolutely decimated him. And Wilder, in my opinion, he may as well, or what he should have done was taken a fight or two against some of the other opponents that he's already fought in his previous 40 odd fights. That's what he should have done. Build his confidence back up. Because what's gonna happen when Fury gets his hands on him again? And the same thing happens. What's gonna happen then? In fact, I'm pretty sure next time, the words, I quit. Daddy, stop hurting me. These words are gonna come out of Deontay Wilder's mouth in the next fight. If Fury's on point, I fully expect the words, I quit, to come out of Deontay Wilder's mouth in the next one. And that's it, he's, he's off. He'll never come back in. You will never see Deontay Wilder back in the ring again if Tyson Fury does the same thing to Wilder in the third fight. But as I said before, it's always gonna haunt him. It's gonna bother him forever. The fact that he had an opportunity for Undisputed and he walked away for Undisputed Legacy. Generational money, $100 million. Ain't no way he's made $100 million, not even close to it, with Tyson Fury. I'll give you the biggest hint. The very first fight, Wilder's guaranteed purse was $4 million. Upsize of pay-per-view and everything, of course. But to have done that, you need a couple of million pay-per-views. It didn't hit that. So Tyson Fury ripped all of that away from him. And now Fury is going to be the one with a very, very healthy bank balance. And legacy as well. Drop your thoughts below. Click thumbs up, subscribe. Catch you all in the next video.